Welcome to Almost Here, Round the Corner of Future Technology podcast with Richard Jacobs. Future Technologies, poised to transform our lives for better or worse, are the focus of this podcast. Almost Here means these technologies are now here and starting to be used, or just around the corner, from Bitcoin to artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more. Everyone and welcome to Future Tech Podcast. I'm your host Juliette Lamar, and joining us today is Isaac Mark. He is the co-founder and director of sales at Be Hired. Welcome, Isaac. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It's uh, very exciting. So, Isaac, go ahead and tell us about Be Hired. Sure. So the um, uh, the project uh, originated about uh, 13, uh, 14 uh, months ago, and part of the reason that uh, drove us down this path is my partners and I have about uh, together about 60 years of uh, recruiting and staffing experience as company owners, recruiters, salespeople. So we know this space very well. And we've come to a point in realization that the industry is severely outdated and uh, broken. And um, we have to find a way to fix it. Uh, more importantly, uh, we have to find a way to reduce the costs of hiring. Uh, We have to um, find a way to make it easier for employers and candidates to meet in a trustworthy, transparent uh, environment. So after long nights of thinking and figuring out how we can approach this, we decided that the best way to is to incorporate blockchain technology, gamification, incentive mechanisms, and um, give candidates Uh, the power to own their data again, and uh, subsequently uh, remove all the middlemen and the rent seekers in the system. That was the the primary driver and the thoughts uh, behind the project. So, yeah, give us a little bit more insight into, you know, the problems that you're trying to solve and and really how big those problems are. Well, we think that um, uh, one of the things that we're uh, facing is – the job boards. That's one of the uh, main uh, conspirators here, if you will. Uh, so job boards, we think, have outlived their um, their value and their, their mission. So what we have is um, uh, uh, software subscriptions that are uh, purchased by large corporations and employers where candidates are looking to, where I should say, where uh, employers are looking to find candidates. The problem there is that your data is taken uh, from the candidates. It's monetized and resold and repackaged uh, to the employers. Hence, uh, the candidates really don't have any incentive to to create and develop really clear 3D uh, profiles that tell us more about who they are, uh, what they're good at, and or any verifications from previous employers or peers. As a result, uh, candidates have figured out a way uh, how to game the system. They realize that a lot of the job boards are connected to clunky old applicant tracking systems that have keyword searches and go out and just search for the best keywords in the resume. So candidates tend to either overinflate uh, their uh, skill set so they can get noticed by a machine and hence that machine will serve that resume over to a recruiter. Mm-hmm. Uh, and or they create profiles which are completely, uh, in simple words, is, are fake. And so as a result, you have a tremendous amount of time wasted going through multiple candidates, multiple resumes, just, just to figure out who is real and who is not, let alone the fact to figure out, uh, which is even more difficult, to verify the skill sets and how this person would um, fit in into an organization. Much of the recruiting today, and I say this from experience of having over 18 years of uh, uh, in the recruiting industry, is very subjective. So, you know, a recruiter may look at a resume and say, hey, uh, this person has too many pages. I don't want to read it beyond the first page. I'll discard this resume. So we, again, we may be discarding one of the best candidates in the whole search. Or the candidate has been in the uh, in the workforce for over 15, 20 years. They won't fit. My client is looking for young, energetic people. Energetic, energetic people. So you know, let me discard this resume. So it's really become uh, too uh, 
subjective versus taken holistically at what the candidate is about, what they do, how they're, you know, what type of cognitive skill sets they have, and dig deeper into what they're capable of. Unfortunately, that's not possible because the candidates do not want to spend the time and the effort because there's no incentive to really develop a clear profile. The other problem we identified, and, and I say this with all the love in my heart, and this is an industry I've been in that has put food on my table for years, that the staffing agencies have really outlived their um, uh, their usefulness as well. So most agencies charge anywhere between 15 to 20% um, of the first year fee salary. So for example, um, if I'm an, um, an employee um, making $100,000, um, the agency that finds me and submits me to the end client, which at the end hires me, uh, is going to pay me $20,000. Now, from my personal experience, if I find the candidate, submit the candidate, and the candidate gets hired, it approximately, I would say it takes five to six hours of my time if I'm very thorough, if I really do an extensive job of vetting the candidate, including background checks and uh, employment verification. So it takes about five to six hours. So roughly, I am actually spending um, as an agency, as an employer, uh, about three to four thousand dollars per hour if you break it down and I think that's way too expensive for the amount of value the agencies bring and subsequently both the job boards and the staffing agencies um, create a lot of friction along the along the way so the candidates really don't know everything about the client uh, using uh, uh, with the use of an agency and the client never really knows enough about the candidate because you have that agency in between that controls the flow of information and it's not always in the best interest of the agency to reveal everything about the candidate because there may be some things that the client won't like and hence they won't even um, acknowledge the resume or interview so mm -hmm. you know a lot of information is held back hence we call this asymmetry of information which we don't believe uh, belongs in the process of recruiting and you know, what, you touched on a few points, but what are some of like the main drivers of why the hiring industry has changed so much? Is it just there's too many candidates out there now, and that's why it's become so much more subjective? Well, I think one of the biggest problems is uh, being that Be Hired is initially focused uh, uh, on the IT space. I think it's the other way around. There's just way uh, there's just not enough candidates for the open mm. jobs. And as a result, it drives a lot of people to enter the space um, who create very overinflated profiles because, you know, mm -hmm. can, uh, all employers are uh, fairly desperate to find good people because at the end of the day, good employees, good employees equals revenue for the company. So um, uh, there is a, a plethora of tools that have uh, quite a few different companies coming up with new algorithms to find the best possible candidates. So... You know, what they're doing is they're taking big piles of messy resumes to start with, and they're condensing it into a smaller pile. At the end of the day, you're still still dealing with a one-dimensional document, being the resume, that doesn't tell you enough about the candidate, and there's no way to verify them unless you go through a whole mm -hmm. extensive process. And at the end, you have to hold your fingers crossed, hoping that this candidate will pass the background check, employment verification, so on and so forth. Absolutely. All right. So walk us through, you know, your Beehive platform. Let's get into, and people want to start using this uh, from both sides, candidate and employer, just the services you provide and, and how, how people are interacting with your platform. Absolutely. So uh, let's, start, let's start with the candidates. Um, when, can, when the candidates are onboarded onto the platform, they have to go through multiple steps of credibility building functions or activities. One of the things is when the candidate comes on the platform, uh, they have to get onboarded using biometrics, um, taking a selfie, uh, verify some of the background documentation. And so this um, gives the recruiters the comfort level that the candidates actually exist. They're looking for a job, and they're not just some, someone that puts their resume in the job board that randomly seeks to collect leads. 
Second, we uh, give the option to the candidate to take a cognitive scoring uh, test. Give the feeling, you know, give the candidates the opportunity to um, show what they're good at. They have leadership skills or they're best left alone and they'll perform under pressure. Um, and that gives the comfort level to, um, uh, to the recruiters as well, you know, that they are dealing with a real human with specific skill sets and they excel at uh, in particular areas. Next, we'll allow the candidates uh, to um, uh, use a verification um, mechanism that will go out to their peers and or former hiring managers confirming what their strongest skill set are, um, where they contributed to the project most, and how to best, you know, they, the candidate can be utilized on a specific project. Fourth, we're working with several partners who are going to verify educational credentials up front. So all of that, the, all that time doesn't have to be spent on the back end confirming if the candidate, you know, finished a specific university. And we know there's been a lot of rumblings about candidates uh, faking their educational credentials as well. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, we'll ask them to take a 10 to 15 second video clip. We want candidates to display their articulation skills, their communication skills, in their body language. As the candidates continue to go through this process, they, can, they receive bonus tokens uh, from Be Hired platform, and they are at the same time being rated. Now, ratings are is something that will help the candidates appear in more searches as the recruiters look for them on the platform. And the more steps they complete, the higher their ranking will become. Every click that the candidate uh, receives, so in a typical environment, if I'm using a job board, let's say career builder or monster, I click on the candidate, that click has already been paid for because I purchased a subscription to that job board. But here, by taking out the middleman, such as the job boards, we are directly given the monetary rewards to the candidates. So if I'm a recruiter sitting at, uh, I'll throw a company out, J.P. Morgan Chase, Bank, Bank of America, and I see Isaac's profile, I click on it. A transfer of token takes place between my account using blockchain and smart contracts into the candidate's account. So this goes in with the whole um, notion that candidates will be incentivized to create clear, deep, three-dimensional digital profiles of all their capabilities, making it much easier for recruiters and employers to assess a candidate and making sure they're real, they're out there, and they're looking for employment. That's, That's the candidate side. So again, what are we doing here? We are this intermeeting. We're taking the middlemen out. The, we are disrupting the typical um, centralized business models. I think I don't need to go through all the debacles of Facebook who, you know, <laughs> make their money and uh, technically $5 from every profile. We want to give the power of the data that you own, things about you, back into your ownership, and you use it as you see fit. So if a candidate, um, if I'm a recruiter and I click on a candidate, I will have an X amount of time to respond, sort of like a SLA, a service level agreement, to the request of the recruiter. If I choose not to respond, I subsequently will not receive any tokens, no monetary transfer takes place, and um, you know, uh, the recruiter does not have access to me. So all the candidates appear in searches without their names, but only with some of the skills and their um, rating on the platform. And again, the rating is driven from uh, all the steps you take when you onboard, including but not limited to the conversations you had with recruiters and employers who crowdsource the rating on the platform as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what we're doing here in essence um, is we're reducing the amount of spam because being, my, being a candidate myself, and I'm sure most of us out there have been candidates in the past, um, receive a ton of useless job offers. <laughs> Just your inbox is full of stuff that you don't even want to read or open. And hence, that trust and that confidence between candidates and recruiters has long been destroyed. And that's one of the drivers behind creating Be Hired, that clear, concise um, 
venue where recruiters and candidates can connect in an in a honest, transparent, accountable environment. Absolutely. And to use Be Hired, um, what is the cost? So we have, uh, as an employer, you can purchase this in the same fashion, um, in a similar fashion that you would purchase any subscription-based piece of software. We have three tiers of um, subscription levels. Uh, we're still working out the kinks and the pricing, but we're thinking anywhere between five to ten to fifteen thousand uh, dollars per year, depending on how many views of candidates you'd like to receive. Um, and that's it and for pricing. Well, that's it for pricing right now. And um, can we can we use Be Hired now, or is it is it coming soon? It is coming soon. We are just about to release uh, our second version of the uh, POC. We're hoping that uh, first quarter of next year, um, users can begin to onboard and recruiters can start using it um, closer to the beginning of second quarter of next year. Fantastic. So if you could give us a little bit of advice, um, you know, for high, for employers and for candidates, you've worked in this space for a really long time. What are some of the biggest lessons that you have, have learned or you've seen develop over these years? Well, I would stay away. I would always make sure that I, as much as possible, I know in today's technology advanced world, it's not always possible. I would love to see candidates that are available face to face. Mm -hmm. um, I would, uh, and I've seen the trend already happen, but I would also, you know, as an as a enterprise company, would continue to push uh, to build out your internal um, staffing capabilities. Uh, I would uh, certainly say that, uh, you know, I've been fooled many times and uh, speaking to candidates who I thought were genuine only to find out that during interviews with clients, they turn out to be something else. So, you know, being well prepared uh, to ask deep technical questions, I think is a must uh, in the industry. Uh, I would always, you know, push candidates to tell us to tell me about all of the activities, uh, including but not limited to the job offers they have in hand. Uh, candidates tend to use that um, as a great leverage tool between uh, uh, between employers and uh, uh, recruiters. And uh, more importantly, I would say that um, it's always best to find a way to find candidates and speak directly to the candidates without middlemen being involved. Just like the car industry or any other industry that's driven by commissions, um, when you're dealing with agencies that are, are getting compensated as a percentage of the salary, there's lots of asymmetry of information, a lot of things that you will never find out that are unclear, and I would highly encourage um, employers to find a direct path to candidates. It will save a lot of money, shorten the hiring cycle, and uh, I think Be Hired will be able to solve a lot of these problems. And where is the best place for people to, to check out Be Hired, to look at your product, and, and really follow your journey uh, as you're leading up to launching? Please visit our website. It's uh, behired.io. Um, um, you can follow us on LinkedIn. You can follow us on the YouTube um, you can follow us on most of the um, traditional and or crypto blockchain um, sites such as Medium, uh, Reddit, and of course, like I said, the, your traditional sites. But we're coming to a store near you, and I think that uh, the space is about to change and the, the paradigm is about to shift in the recruiting industry. I, I hope so. I hope we have bigger and better things on the horizon. Well, I think... And thank you so much for joining us here on Future Tech Podcast and sharing this fantastic new platform you have for hopefully changing this, this aspect of the business in a big way. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, and thank you for having me. That is Isaac Marks. He's the co-founder and director of sales at Be Hired, and their website is behired.io. This has been Juliet Lamar with Future Tech Podcast. Thank you all so much for tuning in. You have been listening to Almost Here, Around the Corner Future Technology Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Subscribe to this podcast, post a review to discover more future technologies 
that are poised to transform our lives for better or worse, such as Bitcoin, artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more. 